So in this final part of this unit, we're going to look at a slightly different class of problems um, where uh, we don't know the complete state of our system when we started the, the, um, the process at time equals zero, um, but instead we know what's going on at two different times, in which this is called a, a boundary value problem. So um, uh, to give us a kind of concrete example, we'll go back to our um, capacitor charging uh, circuit um, and think about a situation where we know the voltage source, we know the resistance, and we know the voltage across the capacitor at two different times. And what we're interested in finding out is the uh, capacitance in the circuit. So as I said, we, we, we do this experiment where we measure the voltage as a function of time. We measure at zero, and we measure two seconds later. And we know that when we started it, the capacitor was discharged and we measured zero voltage. And two seconds later, we measured five volts. We know that we had a nine volt battery. We know that we had a 100 kilo ohm resistor. And the question is, well, how big is the capacitor? So as we said before, this is a, a sort of problem you could write down the analytical uh, solution for and solve with pencil and paper. But it's also good to go and show you can do this numerically because then you at least can check that you get the same answers. So the uh, differential equation that we're going to use is the same as we had before. Um, so we're going to define it in terms of the rate of change of charge, Q dot, or the current in the circuit. Um, and uh, we can express that in terms of the voltage source and, and uh, the voltage of the source and the, the charge in our capacitor. Um, but now our boundary conditions that we're putting in, the other information about the, um, the, the, the problem is that the charge at time zero is zero and the charge at um, uh, two seconds later is going to be five times the capacitance. Uh, that simply comes from that the voltage will be uh, Q over C um, and that's five volts, so therefore the charge is five C. So to solve this problem, we're going to make use of a function called um, uh, solve BVP, so boundary value problem, which is the, the partner to solve IVP. And this is a general purpose boundary value, value problem solver. So it's quite similar to um, solve IVP, um, uh, but there are, some, there are some key differences we'll go over. Uh, what it's using is what's called the, um, the shooting method to go and solve the problem. So uh, this is a, a, a particular numerical method where essentially what you do is you say, uh, here's the uh, system of, of differential equations. Here is a guess at what we think the initial value is going to be. Now try and integrate it and see where you end up and compare with where you ended up with where we told you you ought to end up um, according to the boundary condition. And then it adjusts the, the parameters in the um, differential equations and tries to um, uh, integrate forwards again and see if it gets closer to the, the correct boundary condition and, and in that process works its way into trying to find the, the correct boundary conditions. So to use this function we, we need to give it uh, several things. So first of all we need to give it a model function um, that uh, just like with solve IVP it takes in uh, the time, takes in the state variable which in our case is the charge, um, and any parameters that you need to adjust in order to um, get your uh, result to be right at the, the time that you, you specify in the boundary condition. So in this particular case, that's just the capacitance because everything else in our circuit is known. It's just the capacitance is the unknown, is the unknown parameter. Solve BVP also needs a function that's going to calculate the boundary condition. Now, what this is actually going to do is it's going to tell you what the difference is between um, what the current values of the state variables would have the boundary uh, being and what you actually want it to be to match your boundary conditions. So in other words, this is going to tell us uh, in our particular case here, what we're going to calculate is the difference between uh, what the solver thinks the charge is at zero time and zero and the difference between what the uh, solver thinks the charge is going to be after two seconds and what it and and um, what we think it should be which is five times the capacitance and what the solver is going to do is it's going to try and adjust the capacitance to make uh, make its solution match up to our boundary conditions so we also need to give it a, an initial guess about how that uh, state 
variable changes over time. So we need to give it an initial idea of how the charge is going to vary with time. Um, and obviously also the associated times that we've calculated that, that initial guess with. Um, and finally, um, we need to give it our best guess at an optimum value for the parameter. So in other words, we need to give it a guess for what we think the capacitance is likely to be. So our, our model function looks quite similar to what we had before, except as I say, we can't pass the resistance and the voltage source in as parameters any longer. So they just have to be defined outside the function. So our model function looks like this. So again, we've designed a nine volt source, a hundred kilo ohm resistor, and then um, the model function takes in the time, the charge, and the capacitance. Um, and then the other thing to note is that the uh, all of these things are going to be arrays um, because in general this is going to solve for many equations. So even though we're only solving for one equation, we still have um, the the Q, the state variable, is passed in as a um, an array with one element. Um, and because we've only got one parameter, which is the capacitance, even so the capacitance C is passed in the array with one element because there's only one parameter there. So when we do the calculation, you'll see we're using Q square bracket zero and C square bracket zero. Um, and uh, we also need to make sure that the answer we return back is got a number of rows, which is equal to the number of equations, and then a number of columns, which is going to be determined by the number of times that um, we were evaluating this function for. So this needs to return as a one by the size of the, of the T array elements. And that's what that uh, at least 2D is doing there. So as I said, the boundary condition function is possibly the hardest bit to get, to get one's head around. Um, but what it's trying to go and do in our case is it's trying to tell us the difference between the uh, charge the solver is working with or trying to find at zero time uh, and our boundary condition, Q sub boundary at zero, which is actually zero because we said the capacitor was discharged to start with. So therefore the difference between the charge at zero time and what we wanted is just the charge at zero time. And it also wants to give us the um, the end time. Uh, and so we want to look at the difference between the charge at two seconds minus the boundary condition charge at two seconds. Well, the boundary condition charge at two seconds is 5C. Um, and so we just get um, the charge it's giving us after two seconds minus uh, 5C. Um, so the way that's actually implemented in code is like this. So the function is called with two values for the, the state variable, so charge at time zero, that's QA, and charge at time uh, two seconds, that's QB. Um, and again, those are both arrays, so we only want the first element because we've only got one element because we've just got one equation. So we have uh, QA square bracket zero, um, and that's whatever that is, that's the deviation from our first boundary, which says the charge to start with should be zero. And the deviation from our second boundary is um, the charge at the second time, QB, um, minus five times whatever the capacitance is. Uh, and again, because the, the C variable is actually an array of one element, because we only have one parameter, uh, we need C square bracket zero. And we need to make sure that's an array that we're returning. Okay, so that's the model function and some of which deals with the boundary conditions. So uh, now we're going to go and say, well, um, evaluate it over a certain um, uh, number of times. So this is a bit equivalent to in solve IVP passing it the T underscore eval thing, except we have to do it here. It's not optional. So we're going to take 10 points between zero and two seconds. Um, and we're going to make a really, really bad assumption and just assume that the capacitor stayed discharged for the whole of the time despite the fact that's clearly bogus because we know the capacitor must end up being charged um, to a certain level after, um, two, um, uh, after two seconds. But we don't know what charge that's going to be because we don't know how big the capacitor is. Um, so we'll just assume it's all zero. So there we go. We set up the time and we set up our initial state variable, our Q0. Um, and um, we also then need to give a guess um, of the size of our capacitor. So I'll just guess it's one microfarad. 
um, and then we're ready to go off and solve the problem. So we import solve BVP um, and then call it, passing it in the model function we've just written, the boundary condition function we've just written, the uh, times we wanted to work it out for, um, the initial guesses that go with those times, and also um, the, the parameter, um, which needs again to be a, a list or, or an array, um, which is our guess at the size of the capacitance. Um, and it will go away and it will return this result object, which just like solve IVP, it contains a whole bunch of useful things. So there's a dot success attribute, which if it's true, means it worked. And then you have a result dot message, which you can print out. Um, but probably more usefully is the um, result dot P, which tells you the um, parameters that it found um, uh, um, that solved the boundary conditions. And so in this case, it's telling us that, well, we only had one parameter, but it's telling us that the capacitance of our capacitor that would charge like that, given that circuit, would be 2.48 microfarad. Uh, no, sorry, 24.8 microfarad. So it's quite a big capacitor, which I guess makes sense because it's charging quite slowly. I mean, two seconds to charge up is really quite a, a hefty capacitor. So we've, we've started off assuming it was one microfarad and it's come back and told us, no, it's in fact 24 times bigger than that, nearly 25 times bigger. Um, and we can also um, extract out um, from that that um, uh, we can see what's happening as a function of time. So um, result.x and result.y show us the, um, in this case, the times we evaluated for. I don't know why solve BVP calls it x and solve IVP calls it t, but uh, it does. Um, uh, so that's the, the times we've picked. Um, and um, result.y again is a, a 2D table which every row shows you the result of each differential equation in the system. We only had one, so there it goes. And again, like uh, solve IVP with um, a dense solution turned on, you get a, um, an interpolation object, uh, which you can then call with any value of, of time you like. It tells you at least an estimate of what the result would be. Um, just one caveat there is that just because it's returned that um, interpolation object, don't try interpolating it outside the value of times you asked it to solve the equation for because it won't be valid. Um, it's in fact literally what it's doing is it's doing just a, a parabolic um, or a polynomial uh, interpolation of the timed points you asked it to calculate for. So if those time points are too far apart, then your interpolation object is not very accurate. And if you try evaluating it beyond your time points, then you don't get the right answer at all. But with those caveats, um, you can see you can solve a different type of, of um, problem, these boundary value problems, um, equally easily with SciPy. Uh, 